Turning what started as a blog for female CEOs into a global platform and digital magazine with a reach of 60,000 entrepreneurs, we're talking about spiritual and personal development that can liberate you as a business owner. You're going to change your self-talk, put yourself first, and ask yourself powerful questions, and not just a question starting with why or do that have no depth for further exploration, but powerful questions that can invite introspection and insight. It's all in the Female CEO Create, Evolve, Overcome magazine, and we're talking to the founder, Trisha Scott. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to Funktastic Chats. I'm your host, Mike Zabrin, and this podcast is essential for all small business owners. Industry leaders join every week to help you monetize your passion, turn clients into brand fanatics, and thrive in what you do. I'm a musician, but I fell in love with the world of business. And we're talking to the founder of the female CEO, Trisha Scott. And in just a few short years, Trisha started a free trial on a website platform, built a blog, and had two followers. (laughs) Yes, one was her mom. And over a few short years, her company, The Female CEO, inspired thousands and thousands and thousands of female business owners to stop hiding in their brilliance and break out of the box. She started this company with zero capital, and you're going to love what we've got for you today. Let me take a quick moment and ask, how are you managing your clients? Female-founded tech company Dubsado is the CRM meant for creatives, client management, contracts and forms, automations and workflows, sending invoices, getting paid, accounting and reporting, and so much more. You can have all the features for free for up to three clients. And when you sign up using the code FUNKTASTICCHATS, all one word, FUNKTASTICCHATS, you'll save 20% on your first month or year with Dubsado, www.dubsado.com. Trisha Scott is a certified coach, visual content designer, and serial entrepreneur. Trisha is the founder and editor of the Female CEO and Creative Evolve Overcome magazine, a digital support and education platform of entrepreneurs and small business owners coming together in support and empowerment worldwide. Creative Evolve Overcome magazine is a global platform with 13 editors across six countries and 60,000 entrepreneurs read to come together. There's about a little over 1,800 members in the community page. So we're talking to the founder, Trisha Scott. Welcome to the podcast, Trisha. Thank you. I've given you quite a mouthful there, haven't I, to start you off with? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just got to get this out of the way. Is it weird that I'm a guy and I love the female CEO magazine and community page <laughs> not at all have you met our editor dino no he's a brave man no we have that's a funny thing the female ceo part was actually a blog that the name of the business came from a blog that i used to write so it was our branding is very female led but that's just because that's the stuff i like but over the last probably two years we've had more and more men join the community and they're always like is it okay for us to be here Yes, yes, absolutely. We're not exclusively females at all. That's not what it's about. But yeah, so no, you are more than welcome. Awesome. I loved going to the community page and you welcome all the members and tag them. And it, and it was like, welcome, Claire, Stacy, Stephanie, Mike, Funktastic, Zabrin. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually the third female CEO I've interviewed over the last five episodes and I'm an all out fan. And especially being a musician, the fact that you love great bands. And I think you have a Spotify playlist. I've never seen this on a company's homepage before. You have a Spotify playlist called Girl Boss. And what is the correlation between female artists and female entrepreneurs? Well, firstly, let me see. The Girl Boss playlist actually was put together by our community members. So we find that there are times, and this is across the board, there's lots of times when you get up and you just can't get going and you just can't get motivated. And music is a great motivator. It's a mood changer. So I just reached out into the community. We were a lot smaller at the time. And I just said to everybody, hey, look, if you were in a funk, if you really weren't, couldn't get on with something or you just couldn't get going, what song would you play? And they started giving me suggestions. And I was just using them for myself. And then I thought, you know what, this would be really cool to have all of these in one place so anybody can access the playlist. And it's just grown and grown. And now in the spotlight, uh, it's one of the questions that we ask all of our spotlight entrepreneurs is, what do you want put on our playlist? 
and they gave us their favorite motivational song. So it's getting longer and longer <laughs> as the I time goes on. But yeah, it's a great form of escapism. If you're feeling in a funk, you can get up, put this it's completely free. You can put the playlist on, crank it up and, and get on with it. And it really works. And I think with, when it comes to female musicians, it's or any musicians, it's a, it's a job all the world over. It's a business, isn't it? So, and what we're all about is showcasing talent, whatever that talent might be, whether you're a musician or you're an entrepreneur or you're a small business owner, whatever it is, we all have the same fears. It's all about getting visible and the fear that brings. And of course, dealing with any negativity that comes along the way, because that's part of the fear. So yeah, I think there's a huge correlation and we absolutely love our playlist. You've got some cool songs there. you got some Donna Summer. She works hard for the money. Yeah, step by step do. by Whitney Houston. I know you're an Avenged <laughs> Sevenfold fan too. I am. I am a bit of a, I'm a not so secret rock fan. Um, so there's not a lot of my stuff on there, mostly because it's a bit, it's a bit far out for our members, but I do sneak them in <laughs> now and again. <laughs> because you're in the UK and you have an audience all over the world, what does your email inbox look like at, I don't know, let's say 3 a.m.? Oh my God, it's crazy, man. I have to put my phone, I never used to put my phone on silent, but I have to now because because it's obviously time zones, we're everywhere. Uh, it just pings all night. Like <laughs> from finishing work, I have to put it on silent because otherwise I would just, and I can't just leave it. People say, no, just ignore it. Well, I can't do that. So I have to put it on silent so I don't have this constant distraction, you know? But yeah, totally. my inbox is crazy, man. You're almost on your 25th issue of creative evolve yeah. overcome magazine is that correct that's right we've just we've just put out the 25th and there's definitely no shortage of content on trisha scott and i think you started with you're very open about this you said you started with two followers your I mom did. and a friend of yours I did. and <laughs> and you grew this digital magazine and community worldwide within a few years and your mantra is that you are never alone what does that mantra mean to you do you know that mantra means like everything to me? It's the it's why I built the business. It's where it all came from because I think when I first started my business and I started a couple of businesses, it was always a case of um, I would get really stuck on decisions and ideas. And you can ask your family and you can ask your friends, but it's not quite the same as asking someone who has been or is in a similar position. So when I was getting stuck, I had to start actively looking for people who were like-minded to ask questions of or bounce ideas off or share things with. And the way I found that was by creating it. I couldn't quite find what I wanted or what I needed. So I just went out and created it. And it, like you say, we started with two people. And I think there's so much to be said, especially now with COVID, on bringing people together where humans are wired for connection. So being an entrepreneur can be really lonely, but it doesn't have to be. There are this in not just our community, there's lots of communities now out there that you can go and join and be like, hey, you know what? I don't know how to do this, or I want to try this, or I tried this and it was really bad. Anybody got any suggestions? And it's those things that actually keep you going because you know that you're not alone. And it's that feeling of connection that keeps that, that keeps me going. That the community isn't about me running a community, it's as much about what I get from them as what they get from me. You say that people everywhere, especially women, can be stalled, scared, hiding yeah. in their brilliance. Do you think that tragedy, the passing of your father, divorce, was almost like an awakening for you to follow your passion, to connect with other entrepreneurs? Oh, yeah. I mean, 100%. But I think that's the same with anybody. You know, I think life changes, whether it's tragedy, divorce, any kind of upheaval can be a trigger to change. Um, again, going back to COVID-19, so many changes are happening all over the world. And a lot of them um, are triggered by when we went into lockdown and some people were losing their jobs and people were pivoting in their businesses. It's seeing life from a different perspective. And people were asking themselves, sometimes I think for the first time, what do I really want and what do I really need? But yeah, I think any kind of major event has that potential. For me, the discovery of personal development following a series of life-altering events, family tragedy, divorce, just being two of them, was a, for me, it was a, a slow change to changing my life completely. And when it came to the death of my father, which was just two years ago, I was still working corporate full-time and running the female CEO. So I was always burning myself out. It was always burning the candle at both ends. 
But when that happened, it really, it just switched something on in my brain. Like, we're not playing here. Life really is this short. You know, this tragedy with my father happened within nine days. He was here and then he was gone. And I just, it just really set something off in me. Like this, we're not playing here. You, If this is what you want to do, you need to go out and make this happen. And I did. And that's, I've been working full time in the business now for just come up to a year. I think that's the same for anybody. And it can be any kind of awakening. It can be any kind of event that triggers that. And it's best to ask yourself in that moment, what do I really need? And when you can answer that question, then you go do it. Your latest issue of Creative Evolve Overcome magazine, it, the one with the spotlight of you, is that the 24th magazine or is that the 25th cover? 25th. 25th. Okay, that is the 25th yeah, one. I think so. so. Were, <laughs> were you, yeah, I was just wondering if the more the community was growing, or I mean, because you have such a fascinating story about personally and, and your entrepreneur journey, were people in the community saying, I want to hear more about this female CEO? Yeah. Are people wanting to dig more out of you personally. Yeah, they've wanted that for ages. But what happens is, you see, I've been going to be on the magazine cover from the very first episode, like right at the beginning. I would say, okay, I'll just feature myself, tell people who I am, what I'm all about. But the thing is, there are so many amazing people out there. So people come to me and they're like, I want to be in the spotlight or I have this business or I have this story because the spotlight is very much about journey. So we feature someone's good and bad. We don't just focus on what's been great. We focus on everything. It's the whole the whole thing. And just all these amazing people kept coming up. So I just kept putting myself off. I was like, I'll do that later. I'll do that later. I really want to talk about this. And I knew the journeys that were coming to me through these women were things that our community and our wider community, our followers, would really benefit from. So I just kept putting it back and putting it back um, until it got to January or December last year and, and my editorial team were like, no, you're doing it. <laughs> You are going on that cover. We're not having it. We're not putting anybody else on the cover till you've done yours. Um, I love it. <laughs> I tell you, though, I've been doing this. The spotlight was going long before the magazine. And I didn't appreciate how hard it was to answer those questions. <laughs> and I did it myself. And I got the editors to ask me because I was like, I just write my own questions. And they were like, no, that's not happening. We're writing the questions. And it was really tough. I actually really feel for people now when they have to do that. <laughs> You started as a data input assistant and you climbed the corporate ladder until you were awarded the director of one of the most prestigious real estate companies in your area, especially now you're a CEO who answers every single question from the community yourself. And you really put yourself out there to your followers, which is not something that everybody does. There's a lot of <laughs> automation, as you can imagine, with a lot of companies yeah, yeah. and delegating to different people. But did you keep learning new strategies about delegating, working and just overall understanding people as your role at your real estate agency job kept changing oh yeah absolutely it's been a it was a real eye-opener because I was there for 20 years so I it took me 20 years to climb the corporate ladder it gave me some brilliant lessons you know learning how to manage a team understanding the dynamics of a team people's different personalities how to get the best out of people but that was a huge part of my own development I'm also learning to delegate was a massive learning curve and it's really it that all of those things have come around in this business that I'm in now to in different ways it's like transferable skills so I'm managing now to pull things out of the bag that I learned on my journey years ago and trying to put them into play now things like delegating I've always been really independent so I've always been someone who would be like no no I'll just do that and I'll just take that on till my workload was literally weighing me down And now I've learned that not only to hand it off because people really want to help you like more than you would think. People are empowered when you ask them for help. But also there's been so many things that I've handed over and it's just been done so much better than I could have done it. It's quicker, it's more efficient, it's better. Now, why didn't I do this ages ago? Yeah, definitely. I've learned a lot. Do you use a program in particular to manage so many editors across the world? I mean, do you use something like Monday.com or ClickUp or any one of those systems? There's two things that we do. One is we communicate and communication is key. So we talk to each other a lot. And the other thing we do is is we use like Asana. It's like a task management system, certainly for articles and magazines and when we know things are going out and when they need to hit the market in terms of if they're topical on Valentine's Day or, you know, 
Christmas or whatever. Uh, so yeah, we use task management software to keep in contact mostly. I was talking to Bandzoogle, which is a website platform that's built for musicians to make their own websites. And they're really big on blogging. They have a really great blog. And they had all these blog posts planned out months in advance. And then they had to go back and change everything when COVID happened because they had yeah. to address some of those issues. I wonder if you had something similar of the same in the same way. Yeah, uh, definitely. So what I noticed was, more so not really for us, but I noticed it on my own social feeds, was that when you plan ahead, of, like I only ever plan really a week ahead of time. With the workload that we've got, that might seem crazy because we have a huge amount of content. But especially, like you said, with COVID, what I saw was huge amounts of social media, which was completely irrelevant to the world situation and in some form insensitive. And then there'd be an uproar about it. And what, what I realized was it was people who just planned in advance and just let it run. You don't think about it, do you? You plan it and you let it go out and then it just does its thing and you monitor it later. But yeah, I think that was a huge issue. So for me, I only ever schedule about a week ahead of time, mostly because there, there might be something I want to add. If something comes up in the community or there's an offer or something, I might want to add that in. Big world changes, events, I might want to take some stuff out. So I think it's a it's definitely something to be aware of. If you do plan in advance, and I do advocate it because trying to content market daily is crazy when you have a lot to say. But I would definitely be cautious as to how far ahead you plan. Let's go back to your early 20s. You said you were thrown into this sink or swim scenario. Do you remember saying that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by that? When I started work for the property company that I eventually became director of, I had never done that before. I didn't, I'd never rented a property. I'd never been in real estate. I had no idea what I was doing. And I went for the job as a as data input. And I, I met with the owners at the time and they were just really good to me. And I just knew that we'd get along famously. It was just, we just really hit it off. And they gave me the job, but then it was like, I'll tell you what, why don't you do accounts? I was like, what? I don't do accounts. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just I'll show you what to do. You'll be fine. And all the way through my early career, it was like that. I didn't do a day's data entry in my life. Like I joined as a data entry clerk, but it was like, just do accounts. Just do this. Just go, on, go ahead and do this viewing. And it was crazy. Like it was, but it was very much sink or swim. It was one of those moments, those defining moments when I look back that I could have either said, I don't know how to do this. I'm going to. I'm going to go and do something else. This is too much for me. Or you, you can just roll your sleeves up, get on the internet and learn how to do something. And that's exactly what I did. And it was great. It worked out really well. It was a real learning curve. We have a really similar mindset. And this is why I really wanted to talk to you is because I started off as a side man, meaning I was a musician playing for a lot of other groups. And then I started my own original music band and we play all of the local clubs but the fact that I allowed myself for change, I had a vision that I didn't necessarily hang on too tightly to. Now we do 60 to 70 weddings a year. We have the best musicians in Chicago, and then we'll do all the clubs and festivals. So I listened to what the industry was telling me. I still, I did it. I'm still doing it. But you say, if you thought of your business in a box, it would still be a blog. <laughs> what is, yeah, what is the box and how do entrepreneurs break out of it? The, do you know, the first thing I would say is that what you've just said, yeah, we are scarily similar in this. The best piece of business advice I was ever given was to allow for change. Because when I started the business, as you've just rightly said, it was a blog. It would still be a blog because I had this vision of it being a blog and then maybe having some followers, having a little community around the blog where we could talk about stuff. And I, I met with a lady uh, called Tracy Clarkson. She's this amazing lady. And she said to me, no, this is all wrong. You have, this could go much further than you think. Be prepared to adapt. As this moves, just it go with it. Listen to what your community members want and take it from there. And I did, and she was right. And, and yeah, it would have still been a blog. But the box for entrepreneurs, what is the box? The box is whatever you make, you're making it to be. It could be a family situation, your box could be past events, your box could be a corporate job, a partner, whatever. And each of us, everybody has their own reasons for staying small. And that's what the box is about. The box is about it's your comfort zone, it's how you stay small. So by changing our thinking, and when we learn how to change our thinking, we can pretty much do anything really. 
So breaking out of the box to me to answer your question is really about learning to advocate for ourselves, listening to what, exactly as you said, listening to what your industry needed, what my community needed at the time, and continues to evolve and need at the time, hence our name, Create, Evolve, Overcome, and having a voice. And some people have never learned to develop that voice. We talk about all the time in our community, it's a step-by-step process, but every step is another step out of the box. I heard you say in an interview that you don't have to do everything alone. And for years, I did everything alone. And it took one of the vocalists, Alicia Monique, to be like, I'm helping you, whether you like it or not. Make me a company email address right now. And now she's a partner of the company with me years later. But do you think that you got help at the right time? Or do you wish that you would have asked for help earlier? I wish I'd asked for help sooner. I'm a bit fiercely independent. It's like the best and the worst thing about me is that I'm just, I'm fiercely independent. I like to get things done. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm not one to sit, sit around and wait for stuff. But at the same time, in that, in doing that, as you said before, you know, about handing stuff over and delegating. If I'd done that sooner, I found that handing stuff over and the people I've handed it over to can A, do it better than me. Like they just can. It's a hard pill to swallow as an entrepreneur, but yet people can do stuff better than me. And, you know, and they do it quicker and I don't have to do it. And there's so many things that now I've handed them over. My time is freed up either to be, to go back and do some real coaching with people or to really pour my energy back into my magazine and my community, which is where my heart is. And it's been, yeah, and that's, I'm still learning that. I'm still going with learning that. But I do wish I'd had had help sooner. That would have been so much easier. People want to start a business, but a, a common theme that at least I hear is that they don't have enough money to start one. What do you say to that? You don't need money to start a business. Like generally speaking, a business is an idea. The female CEO was started with zero capital. It was a blog. You know, I just set up a blog on the internet. I'd never done it before. I started out using, oh, I forget what it was called at the time. It was just a free blogger site. I don't think you'd think it's available now. And that's how I started the business. And it was just basically me putting my ideas on paper um, and getting them out into the world. And that's learning to build the website. I had, I'm not techie, really, at all. I, I love design. I love playing with it. I love making things. But I had never, ever built a website before. When it came to creating the female CEO, when I decided I wanted to be a, a resource platform and a site, it was quite flat out terrifying. I was like, okay, I'll hire somebody. I'll, you know, I'll have to look at the prices. And it was so expensive to hire a designer. I was like, I'm just going to do this myself. You built um, that whole website yourself? I did with no experience. Oh my and wow. what's, what's That's really amazing. cool about that is now when women join the community, or I'm saying women, anybody joins the community and they say, but I, I can't do what you do. I can't build a website. I mean, trust me, I built that website with no knowledge at all. I know so much now, but I'm four years down the line, nearly five years down the line. And if I can do it, you can do it. And I can send them to the site and hand on heart, say to them, everything you see there is my work. And I had no experience. If I can do this, anybody can do this. I love how you say that even if you know, you're know you investing in technology to run your business or something like that, I think you say this, well, guess what? Uh, the websites, platforms and everything like that, they give you a free 30 days anyway. <laughs> yeah, they do. That's right. That's how I started. I got a free 30 days. And I was like, I can mess this up as much as I like for the next 30 days. <laughs> there's so much content on your website i feel like a lot of websites i look at now especially when i really dig in onto guests for the podcast is when i really started to notice this is that okay some information i'll find on their website and your website is supposed to be your hub for everything's supposed to lead back to your website right and you know some information was on their website some information was on the facebook page some information with you i could really i felt like i could dig into the female ceo as much as i wanted to and not feel overwhelmed that, that's a huge point. That's a huge point for us. And thank you for saying that because it's one of the things that I was really always concerned about was not causing overwhelm. We're already overwhelmed enough as a society and certainly as small business owners and entrepreneurs. We've got so much happening. So it was set up to be the idea behind the female CEO is that it's a one-stop shop. So basically everything on all of our platforms, all of our social spaces, all comes back to the website. So everything is held there. It's not scattered. It's all in one place. And when you go to it, you have a workroom section, which is all work-related, marketing, websites, anything work-related is in there. 
you've got Spotlight, which is entrepreneurial journeys, very motivational. And then you've got uh, the retreat. And the retreat is personal and spiritual development. So depending, no matter what you need, I'm very much a believer that nothing works unless you do. So you've got to build the foundation to build your business upon. And you can do that simultaneously by topping up on your self-care all of the time, which is very important. But yeah, the hub of the, the operation is always the site. And when you come to it, it's easy. You've got three or four sections and that's it. And everything you need is there. Plus, you can search for what you need as a search bar too. As a musician, a lot of musicians will come out with a record now and they won't release a physical copy of it. It's not like back in the old days, it was vinyl, then a CD. Now it's just, hey, we're going to throw this on CD Baby and it distributes it to all the digital outlets like Spotify, Apple Music. <laughs> and just because the reach is so much greater, we live in a digital world and the digital world is all about content. And I'm wondering if that's the same logic as why you made it your magazine digital. Yeah, absolutely. So the, but the thing about the magazine, it was an accident. The magazine was never meant to to be what it is. It's just, again, and this is the beauty of allowing your business or your idea or your whatever your industry is to evolve. Because the magazine, what was happening was we put all of our articles on the site. So you've got all these different sections. Everything goes on there. And then we were sharing it out to our social channels. So, for example, we have a brilliant editor called Alana, and she is our money coach. And she talks about money mindset, and it's a very topical thing, especially through COVID with people you know, losing their jobs and changing their businesses and stuff. So we were putting a lot of her stuff out, and I was getting women messaging me on Facebook going, I know you listen to your members, and we want more stuff about money. And I'm like, really? Like, I put four articles out of money last week. And... I would say, why aren't you seeing this? And of course, what I realized was even in a closed group like our Facebook community, Facebook won't let you see everything that you post. So they were missing it. And I was like, ah. Oh. So I had to find a way of getting all of that month's content, whatever it might be, into one place so then we could distribute via our mailing list. Because if I was putting out every article onto our mailing list, you would be sick of hearing from me because we have so many articles every month. You'd be like, oh, unsubscribe, too much information overload. But by putting it into a magazine, it meant that we could have everything in one place. You could download it. You could read it online. You could still click through to all of the links because it's digital. You could go and find what you needed without having to leave and go look for it. So the, the magazine was literally born of trying to make sure that everybody could access the information that they needed to see at the time. So making it digital was really, that was the initial reason. But then it just really took on a life of its own. So we just allowed it to evolve and it just got bigger and more and more popular. And then people were reaching out to me like, we need this in our country and how do we get hold of this? And can you send me this? Can I get on a mailing list for this? Can I get on the cover? Can I give you an article? And it just, it went crazy. It, it's been an amazing journey. And yeah, so now because we are worldwide and we have, I think our top readerships are the UK, the USA, and Switzerland. Because we're worldwide, trying to print and distribute in all of the different countries is just a headache I'm not prepared for, <laughs> to be quite <laughs> honest. It's like I do enough. Like, I don't need another headache, thanks. So, yeah, being digital is just super convenient. And people read it on their phones or whatever. Is your goal to keep the magazine free i mean it is free right you didn't give me yes. a special subscription or anything i mean the magazine is free and this is it's absolutely free entrepreneur magazine i've ever read in my life Thank you. one of the one of the things that i've really internalized in one of your latest issues and again you can read the whole magazine on www.thefemaleceo.com in the creative evolve overcome magazine is that i really learned to change my self-talk and yes. in the magazine there's an article with marie frager and she's a guest editor, and she talks about stepping outside of your comfort zone because as humans, our greatest need is acceptance and our biggest fear is rejection. And yeah. I'm wondering, Trisha, how your self-talk has changed or evolved the more that the female CEO grew over time. Firstly, I just love Marie. She's super awesome. She's just, she's such a giver. Like she just, her articles are always so so good she's actually a guest blogger to us so she just gave me this article to put out because she felt it was really topical for our community and she's so right so her article was about reinventing herself after 40 
But of course, like you just said, everything she said applies across the board. For me, I've gone from, as we said, two followers and a blog to an 1800 strong community of 50 or so thousand followers and of course a magazine. So I've really had to do the work on myself along the way. Training as a coach helped massively in that process. I've learned that on the days where I feel vulnerable or too visible, how to change my mindset and use that to my advantage. And that's all through self-talk. There's times when all of us as business owners, you look at the numbers and it's terrifying. And by that, I mean, you know, when they're small and they're big, so you don't know what's worse. You could put something out there and no one reads it, or you put something out there and everybody reads it. And it's equally as scary. And the only difference is in the the way that we perceive it. So yeah, self-talk is a huge issue. So if anybody hasn't read Marie's article, go read it. It's on the homepage. Yeah, here's a summarized quote from the article. Our emotions are not logical, and the brain doesn't and cannot distinguish between a real or imagined threat. So she compares it to a relationship breakup. A relationship breakup is actually way worse (laughs) than public speaking for most people. But because public speaking is very scary, you're telling yourself you can't do it, and that negative psychological response is the same. Do you find yourself silencing negative self-talk oh yeah something you just automatically tune out or is this something that you reflect on it's something that i automatically tune into because as humans we generally don't so when i was first learning how to do this is a great tip for anybody listening is that we go through our day in in, in a mostly unconscious state you know we have like sixty thousand thoughts a day you can't monitor that that would just you'd be on forever so what I learned to do was every hour and I don't do this or every hour every day I hasten to add but every hour I would have a, a little ping that went off on my phone, like an alarm, just a one ping. And every time it pinged, I would tune in and ask myself how I was feeling. Not necessarily what I was thinking, because you don't always know what you're thinking, but how I was feeling if I felt if it was if I felt good or if I felt bad, basically. And I learned to to look at those that emotion that was going on and then trace it back to a thought. So if I was feeling bad, if I was feeling frustrated, if I was feeling, you know, scared or vulnerable, I go, okay, what was I thinking when that ping went off? What was I thinking about? And I, you tra- I traced it back to the thought, and then I just simply changed the thought. You can reframe it, you can change it. There's, there's lots of different methods. Um, and I would change the thought. And if you do that on a consistent basis, if you regularly check in on how you feel, then you'll catch yourself in the negative thinking pattern. And then that's how you change it. And the more you do that, the easier it is. Now I recognize, I've, I've learned to recognize it very quickly and I can snap myself straight back out of it. But it is a process. It is something that you have to learn. The magazine, it's not all about how do you make money? How do you make money? How do you make money? There's a, like you mentioned, there are articles like that, but it sounds like the magazine is also about asking yourself powerful questions and really internalizing who you are and and where you want to go in the business world. It seems like there's a lot of just self-dialogue that is important for an entrepreneur. Yeah, it, it's probably the most important thing because the business stuff, like the, the, workrooms one, the workroom articles that we put out, anybody, it, that stuff you can learn. There are skills that you learn, building a website, SEO, content marketing, any of that stuff, anybody can learn it. You can go away, you can study it, you can learn how to do it. But none of that is any good to you if your foundation isn't right. So you have to be able to uh, cope with it. So when you do get attention, you have to be able to cope with it. You have to be able to deal with it. You have to to deal with your negative self-talk, all of those things, which is why we have the retreat section. So when you come to the female CEO, like I said before, it's like a one-stop shop. So we work on you and we work on the business. So you get both. And yeah, you're right. It's not all about making money in the magazine. And in fact, it's probably just 10 or 5% of what we talk about in the business. If it was all about making money, we'd be charging for the magazine. Yeah, <laughs> we keep it free because when I started this business, what was really important to me was that there was no barrier to entry for anyone. So it wasn't a magazine back then, it was just a blog. And we started this really small community with our two followers. And it was super important to me that anybody who was starting a business, we had we used to have women coming to us a lot and we still do who are either having a baby or have just had a baby. So again, like we talked about earlier, huge life changes that make you question, do I really want to go back and do this job? Do I really want to go back to work? Do I really want to, do I just want to be at home? Do I want to work from home? All of these questions. And a lot of the time they couldn't afford to pay for a coach or 
join communities that were charging. And it was really important to me that everybody could access this information for free. And that's always been our mantra. So the level that we offer in the community and in the magazine will always be free. We will never take that away. Talk to me about the sense of empowerment, ownership that comes along with being a female CEO. I think, for, again, I can only really talk about my personal experience or that of you know the women that I've spoken to in the group. For me, it's been a very liberating experience. 20 years corporate to leave and do my own thing, if you like, or do my own thing full time has been an immensely liberating experience for me. I think just to be able to, and, and again, this is something that even I forget to do often, is to step back and, and look at what we've created. This magazine, this beautiful website, this, this community of incredible people who are happy to jump on board and help each other out. It's, it used to be that someone would ask a question in the community and I would jump in there and answer, or one of the editors would jump in and answer to try and help. And we don't need to do, by the time I get there or the editors get there, like 20 other people have given them an answer. I've got you. I've got you. I can help you with this. Try this, do this, don't do that. What are you thinking about when you do that? All of these questions. And it's so it just warms my heart to stop and, and see that. So for me, it's the journey and, and this ongoing journey is very, it's been so empowering. But for me, that's because we're empowering so many other people. We're allowing these women, these men and women in our community to give themselves full expression, to find their voice, to make a scene, as we call it. And it's that's the best thing in the world. That's the best feeling in the world. I get up every day and I think about that. And in, in another interview I was watching, there was another entrepreneur and she was talking about a coaching exercise that she did with her clients. Each of the women would get a sheet of paper and they'd get a minute to write all of the women down in the room. And she said not once would the person write themselves as never. first. And they that's a really do. big thing is you should always make yourself first and come first. Yeah. There's another article written by Teresa Peters, who is another guest editor. And she talks about the importance of asking yourself powerful questions to invite introspection and insight. And this kind of goes back to our being in the box conversation, I think, when you ask yourself these things and and the questions that start with why or do, those kind of questions that have no depth for further exp uh, explanation. And I wanted to ask you, Trisha, a couple of these powerful questions that Teresa Ooh, Peters asked your readers <laughs> and get your response to them. Is that okay? Can we Go do that? It. Do it. Okay. Okay. What does my ideal life look like? Oh, my ideal life. My ideal life would be to to live in this live in the space of community like we do now. So I'm, I'm already living my ideal life, as in my work is dedicated to helping other people, which is what I'm all about. But on a much but on an expanded basis. So I ask myself most days, like how could how good could this get? And it always just gets bigger. So for me, my ideal life would be to continue doing what I'm doing, but on a much bigger scale, you know, a, a huge scale. So we've already got plans for expansion. One of the things we're looking at to do is to um, launch a foundation for the education and empowerment of girls worldwide who don't have access to education. So in run a mentorship program for young women who don't have that in their lives. So for me, living my ideal life would be reaching more people and really being able to expand the business to have an arm into that charitable side that we can, we're not just offering advice that we're really changing lives. Do I have enough fun in my life? Oh, that's a good question. Teresa, why did you ask that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's see here. To be honest, she is, there's a lot of questions in here. There are really a lot of powerful questions. I took, I took, the, hard, I took right? two of the hard ones. <laughs> Yeah, you did. <laughs> yes, I, actually, yes, I do. I have a lot of fun in my life. I think I'd have more fun if I wasn't on lockdown in the UK on our third lockdown. But we make the most of it. We have a lot of fun in our house. We have we have a lot of funny movie nights and we have a lot of online quizzes with our family and friends. And 
we do what we can to make it fun. But yeah, generally speaking, if it wasn't for us being locked down as we are, we have a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say yes, I do. I've got a question for you that just came off the top of my head. Do you work in an office right now or do you have a home office? I have a home office. Okay. The reason I ask is because so do I, and I know a lot of other entrepreneurs, especially right now do. And do you have times where, especially when you've got emails coming at you 24 hours a day and people are trying to get a hold of you all the time and I'm still on multiple channels like me. I'm like, hey, Trisha on Facebook. Hey, Trisha on email. <laughs> do you have times where you just know to shut off, shut your phone off? I know you, you mentioned when you're sleeping, of course, but how do you make time for family when your job is a really could be a 24 hour job? Oh, if you yeah, to be, 100%. Right? My, my job could be all day, every day. Yeah, the, yeah, the answer is I'm much better. I think when I first, what, what happened was when I first started working at home, I was at the beginning of lockdown. I was working 24-7 because I was sitting at my laptop. I could be sitting on the sofa or sitting in my what is now my home office. And I was working an awful lot. But I'm much better now, mostly because of my editors and you know, reading their articles. Because if you read lots of their articles, they're about this. So I have to read those articles and publish them every month. So I learn so much. Uh, but I'm much, much better at that now. Now what I do, I have, I've created a dedicated workspace in the house. So I, as we said, I have a home office. I also shut off now, so it gets to usually 6, 6 p.m., depending on where in the world I'm working with. Obviously, if I'm working with someone who's ahead or behind, then sometimes it's later, sometimes it's earlier. But generally speaking, I will shut off at that time. I close down the computer and I shut the door. Like, I just leave the office altogether. My phone goes on silent when we're having family time. So I have evenings and most weekends, again, depending on who I'm working with around the world, But generally speaking, yeah, I'm I'm very strict with that now. Everything goes off. Everything shuts down. And I I come away and leave it. Speaking of your editors, let's talk a little bit about content marketing. What separates content marketing from all of your other marketing? Well, content marketing is is basically just very targeted. Claire Winter is our expert editor in this very thing. Her blog, her articles are um, called Cracking Content on the site so you you may have seen that on our website so she's all about content marketing that's what she does so content marketing is is basically just creating content for a specific or targeted audience in our case that's small business owners and entrepreneurs and content marketing is what you use to grow your audience and therefore grow your sales visibility that sort of thing but yeah if you're interested in content marketing go to cracking content claire has got you covered well and truly I Chromecasted it to my TV. I literally watched an hour, a little over an hour interview with you and Claire Winter. And it was, my mind was just blown. <laughs> there's a, re- there's, <laughs> yeah, I, I loved listening to her and I love the conversation you guys have. And there's a, a really great article where she talks about, we live in a world of uncertainty now with COVID and everything and consumers want to feel heard and listened to more than ever in a sense of yeah. control and power to invest in a product and, or service. Just gaining their trust and expressing your core values is, is important. In what ways do you use social media to amplify all of the things that you're doing? How you can really bring social media to express your core values? Yeah, I think social media is amazing. They don't make it easy for you as an entrepreneur or as a small business owner because um, the algorithms change all of the time. So like I said before, you know, we were putting all of these articles that we were listening to our audience, going out to our editors and saying, what have you got? They were giving us all of this brilliant information and no one was seeing it or few people were seeing it. And that I think social media is frustrating in that sense. But again, we come back to our values. As long as we're putting it out there and we're willing to adapt, which the magazine is a, a classic example of that, we're willing to adapt and change to meet our market needs then we're okay. And I think social media is amazing. And it can be, we're very lucky in some in some respects to have it. When I was growing up, and so in some ways growing up, I'm glad we didn't have it. And in other ways, I wished we did. But yeah, I think it's it's an amazing tool if it's used. I think it can, t- it can take over if you're not careful. But again, one of our values is to keep a light heart. It's not all work. So we stay passionate. We retain a sense of adventure and reinvest in our pleasure. 
So we take social media into that. You could say, we keep it light, we keep it fun. We don't get too heavy with it. We don't take it too seriously. Everybody knows that there are trolls on social media. We've all had it. We've all heard it all before. So we keep it light. You know, we don't take everything so seriously and we celebrate success. And I think social media is a great place to celebrate success, especially in a community like ours, because everybody's on your side. With social media, I think you mentioned that in the beginning of the female CEO, you were using something like Hootsuite and you yeah. make a post and then blast it out on all of your channels. The same post goes on all of your channels, the community page, the female CEO page. And it was great because you said you really got your name out there and it was a great thing to do to just get your name out there. But now your posts are a little more targeted for the different communities that you have. Do you still plan them out ahead of time? Yeah, and like I said before, but I only plan about a week in advance because holding a community like ours, which is so you know big, it's it can be very changeable. And again, going back to world events, COVID being a classic example, everything's changed in the space of a few days with COVID. So your marketing had to be quickly adapted. And if you'd planned three months in advance, you were going to lose all that information because it was no longer relevant. So we plan about a week in advance on our social media. And I love, I love sitting there on a Sunday and thinking, what are we talking about this week? What do our community need? Because that way we can keep it fresh. So if a community in one week is asking, if they're all seem to be having the same issue with visibility, I'm like, okay, I'm going to hit visibility on our social channels next week because I know that's what you want to hear. I know that's what you're looking for. So we, we can keep it relevant that way. So I still use Hootsuite. I still use Hootsuite for scheduling. I also use some of Facebook and Instagram's in-house tools for scheduling. I think they're really good. They're really easy and they're free. So again, going back to starting a business with no money, tons of free stuff out there that you can use. We talk about that on our site. But yeah, I think as long as you, I think scheduling is really important, but I also think not to lose the personal touch is also very important. And that's a difficult balance when you have a big community. Trisha Scott is the founder of the Female CEO and the Creative Evolve Overcome magazine. It's a global platform with 13 edit editors across six countries and a reach of about 60,000 entrepreneurs who read this and come together. And you could go on www.thefemaleceo.com. I actually started, I was so inspired by your community page, Trisha, that I started my own Funktastic Chats community page. Wow, so, well done. I know, just the other day, just the other day. So Trisha Scott, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I can't wait to keep up with the female CEO and the community and just watch you grow and be a part of the growth with you by following you. Thank you for having me. It's been absolutely lovely to talk to you. I am thrilled about your community. Re look, reach out anytime if you want to talk about it. I'm happy to, to give you some of my insider knowledge. <laughs> And that was founder of The Female CEO, Trisha Scott. Go to www.thefemaleceo.com. And on her website, she's got three sections. The work room, which is all work-related marketing. The retreat section, which is all about spiritual growth and development. And the spotlight, which tells stories about the journeys of entrepreneurs within the female CEO community. And speaking of the community, go to Facebook and type in the female CEO community. And you can connect with not only just Trisha and all of her guest editors that we discussed today, but also around 2,000 other CEOs from across the globe. Next week, we'll be talking to Megan Brown. She's the director of content strategy and B2B education at the Not Worldwide and Wedding Pro, which is the number one wedding marketplace to advertise your business to engage couples. Growing up with a booking agent and a wedding band leader for parents, Megan Brown went to school for music business and was originally a jazz major. And there's no doubt that marketing and events are in Megan's DNA. Because music stems from collaboration and we are naturally so collaborative as musicians, why being a musician could give us an advantage in business and how to translate that through our marketing in 2021. Be safe, be extraordinary, and we'll see you next week on Funktastic Chats.